Hello, yes, welcome back. Uh, this is Charles. Uh, today we have got a laptop which is an HP 840. This laptop has got an interesting story. Someone who brought it to me watched my video of the first HP 840 that I fixed, I think like two years ago, which was turning on and off. So this guy watched my video and happened to be from the same country. So he went to my website and he contacted me. So he brought the same laptop. You can see it is also an HP 840. It actually has this some kind of similar symptoms like the one I fixed uh, two years ago. So I'll put the link to that video if you didn't watch it. However, this laptop, when you turn it on, uh, the battery is low, but let me put in the charger. So you see, when you plug in the charger, it automatically goes on and lights these two lights. That's the power button. The fan also keeps blowing. I hope you can hear the fan. But the difference, this one does not go off and on. It stays on and the fan keeps blowing. So that's the difference. The other video, the fan kept on blowing and laptop kept on coming on and going off. However, this one does not go off. So these symptoms, look a little bit similar but they are quite different so let's open this laptop and see if we are also able to fix this problem So the housing is off. Another thing I've seen, actually the first video was 840 G1, but this one is 840 mm -hmm. G2. So if you watch that first video, you'd remember that the problem the first laptop was missing chipset voltage at the bottom here. And that's why we replaced that chip and the laptop worked again. However, with this one, before we jump straight to that part, I want us to first measure sham voltages on these coils and see if all these voltages are present then we shall go on the other chipset so automatically if the fan is blowing we assume or automatically if the fan is on a laptop run zone we already have 3.3 and 5 volts so you can see we have them so this is the CPU voltage it is missing when we check RAM voltage RAM voltage is also missing when we check on this coil we have 1.05 so when we check on this one we have 1.07 now when we check on this one you can see we have 1.5 so let's first take out this motherboard we will check the chipset voltage at the back So the motherboard is out. So if you take a look at this motherboard, it looks like you don't see anything obvious. However, this part here looks to have some kind of like liquid. Now, can you see the problem? So this part here suffered some liquid damage. So if you look closely here, you can see we had some kind of liquid damage at this part. And now this liquid seems to have moved from this part into this section here. You want to see? <laughs> so guys, this is here disturbing me. Eh? <laughs> Some liquid damage. Uh -huh. So this is what I was telling them. You see, 
the, the laptop someone poured here I think some liquid eh? it moved around here and then it came up to here so you can see this rusting might actually be the cause of the problem so when you look at these components at this time we have poured some liquid but seems the damage is still much let's try to clean it up So you can see after clean up, it looks clean. So let's try to measure these capacitors in continuity mode and see if they are still working. So it is no shoot here. No shoot here. The same on this small one. So let's put it in back and test. So let's put one RAM chip. So let's plug in the charger. So it looks like it's the same. Nothing has changed. Now let's measure and see how much Now you can see we are having 0 0.6 here Remember this one was giving out 1.3 what we did messed up the chip but when it's giving us 0.6 now this U6200 is there uh, is the RAM voltage or supply so the output should have at least 1.35 now let's measure also CPU power is not present 1.5 is still there these are automatically there. So, this voltage. Then this one is present. Now, this is the chipset power. So, the issue is around this RAM chip. But now, let's use the schematics to diagonalize it. So, guys, when I look here in the schematics, this is the chip. And this schematics is for HP G2. Mm -hmm. So this is the G2 motherboard. Now the output should be coming out on pin 796. So on pin 6, the output is 0 0.6. Then let's see v in which is pin fifteen. So this is the V in which is nineteen. So 
19 is present. Let's see pin 18 for 5 volts. So 18 is to be 5 volts. However, we are seeing 1.2 volts. So pin 18. No. Actually, pin 18 should have 5 volts. Yesterday I went to one of my fellow technicians and I asked him for a spare board which has this chip and good enough he had this motherboard and used it for parts you see the BIOS chips are off the EC are off but the chip you want is on so without wasting time I'm going to, to first swap the RAM chip from this motherboard to the other motherboard and see if we can fix this motherboard This one is hot. So let's clean up. I will need to connect the fan. So let's connect the charger. So the laptop turns on. Still the fan is not spinning. Let's measure the voltage. Yeah. This time around we have voltage. See? 
Certo. So you can see this time around we have the voltage, however it is. 1.4. But you saw the fan was spinning. Let's see if you have the CPU, you see? We have the CPU voltage. So probably this laptop is now displaying. And uh, when I touch here, I can feel the the CPU is getting hot. So let me take out the charger and put it back in the housing and we see if it can see the picture. So let me put in the charger. Charger is in. You see the lights light up here. And you see we have display on the screen. Wow. So this is also a successful repair. Yeah, it does this when it is resetting. So let's wait for it to turn on again. So you can see the power light is on. Now we see the HP logo and even these lights are on. We even have the Windows logo. So we are lucky that we have also been able to fix this one. So one thing I want you guys to remember, these laptops might give some kind of similar symptoms, but they will still have some difference. Or sometimes the symptoms might be similar, but the root cause is different. So with this one, you saw that it had suffered some water damage, which damaged the ROM chip. However, in the previous video or in the first video, it was a chip that makes voltage for the chipset. So it is easier for you to confuse these symptoms and think it's the same problem. However, if you do deeper analysis and diagnosis, you can easily fix these motherboards. So this laptop, as I told you, it's for one of the YouTube viewer. Now, spoiler, it took me a few days to get this motherboard. We have got the chip. And this guy had came back to pick up before I, uh, before I finished the repair. So I actually told him, if you want to take the laptop, you're free to take it. But you have to pay some money for the time I've taken diagonizing this motherboard. So he thought about it and said, you know what? Let me leave it with you. You let me know when you finally fix it. This type of repairs actually take time and you need to tell the customer uh, straight away that this type of repair is not going to be is not going to be a one day repair or an instant repair so it needs to give you time so this one I'm going to assemble it later and I know he's going to be surprised when I send him a picture of his laptop working so thanks guys for watching if you like the video you can subscribe if you think someone else might find this video useful you can share with it and if you have any question, you can put in the comment. I'll try my best to reply to them. So thanks. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.